Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to JK Tire and Industries Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by MK Global Financial Services. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen to only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Chirag Chain from MK Global Financial Service. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Aditya. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of MK Global Financial Services, I would like to welcome you all to the 3Q FI24 earnings conference call of JK Tires. Today we have with us from the management team, Mr. Anshuman Singhania, Managing Director, Mr. Arun K. Vajoria, Director and President, International Operations, Mr. Anuj Kathuria, President, India Operations, Mr. Sanjeev Agarwal, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. A.K. Kintra, Financial Advisor. I shall now hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks, post which we will open the floor for Q&A session. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, on behalf of J.K. Tyre and the family, I wish you and your family a very happy new year. 2024. It is an immense pride I share with you that all financial year uh, 2024 so far has been very noteworthy achievements in our businesses. Uh, amongst many, JK successfully completed its QIP of rupees 500 crores, which received an overwhelming <coughs> response from the market investors, reinforcing confidence in our growth story. This is in addition to 240 crores raised from IFC Washington in March 23 by way of preferential issues. Talking about quarter 3 FY24 performance, JK Tire continued to pursue profitable growth centered on product premiumization, uh, volume expansion and improved product mix. Quarter 3 witnessed a significant improvement in operating profitability and achieved an EBITDA of Rs. 563 crores on a revenue of 3,700 crores. The net debt at 3,456 crores registered a 24% reduction from the levels recorded in March 23. Return ratios have also improved significantly over March 23. Strong momentum in the economic activity and positive consumer sentiments across product categories continue to provide tailwinds to both automobile and tire industry. In quarter 3, JK Tire has clocked a volume growth of 7%, mainly contributed by replacement and OEM segment which grew by 11% and 6% res uh, respectively over the corresponding quarter. However, export has seen a volume reduction of 8% due to political, geopolitical disturbances and supply chain disruption. The ongoing capacity expansion projects for TBR and PCR are progressing as per schedule and full production ramp up will be achieved by end of FY24. We have further announced an implementation of capacity expansion in TBR, PCR and all steel light truck radial tires for an aggregate cost of 1400 crores. Recently, JKTR hosted its 19th edition of Indian Tire of the Year and the Indian Motorcycle of the Year Awards 2024. The most coveted and prestigious award in the automobile auto in the Indian automobile sector. A platform created by JP Tires. Series segment continue to witness high single digit growth with demand support supported by government impetus on infrastructure, mining and construction, growth in core industry and rising tourism and sustained 
growth in the e-commerce activities. The PV segment growth trajectory continued for two consecutive financial years with introduction of new models launched and positive sentiments towards SUV. The PV sales grew, growth momentum is expected to continue going forward. On the tire sector outlook, demand momentum continues to be steady in the domestic market. We remain optimistic for the tire sector in the medium to long term. The demand is primarily driven by private sector capex, high vehicle utilization, increased disposable income, and its mentioned earlier impetus on infrastructure development. On export outlook, the global environment continues to remain challenging as the supply chain disruptions has erupted on account of Red Sea crisis, which has increased the ocean freight. However, the demand is on a recovery trajectory in the global market. On the channel development, during the quarter, we added 35 brand shops and 40 plus fleet customers to enhance our brand presence in the replacement segment. We are continuously growing our network in a identified white spaces. We have further strengthened our presence for supplies of XM, XS and XD series tires in the E buses and the CV models across OEMs. Our trust on increasing R&D spend will further enhance our range of innovative products in the portfolio. Focus on ESG is one of our key strategic priorities. We are investing in renewable energy at all our plants to become more sustainable. We are committed to deliver strong operational and financial performance with a focus on growth plans. The same will enable us to deliver the balance sheet further and enhance stakeholders' value. Now I would request Shri Arun Bajoria ji to talk about the performance of JK Tornell Lexis. Thank you, MD sir. Uh, on uh, JK Tornell Mexico, in Q3 FY24, JK Tornell Mexico displayed resilience, sustain, dis, sustaining robust performance in both overall revenue and profitability. Despite the challenges associated with the lower number of working days, typical of the third quarter, being uh, December being a Christmas month, uh, Tornell achieved a turnover of 1,291 million pesos, which is equivalent to rupees 620 crores, maintaining stability on a year-on-year -year basis. Operating profits at EBITDA levels remained slightly lower at 102 million pesos, equivalent to rupees 49 crores, showcasing the company's consistent financial strength, notably J.K. Tornell retained its leadership position in the Mexican PCR market, enjoying the highest market share among all the Mexican uh, tire manufacturers who are even foreign companies but manufacturing in Mexico. To further strengthen its market presence, the company is actively gearing up for the launch of new brand of PCR tires. Earlier, the performance was affected by the continuous appreciation of the Mexican peso impacting exports. However, the gradual increase in private consumption in Mexico, coupled with positive per capita income growth, is fostering a supportive environment for domestic demand, a trend expected to persist in the coming quarters. We actively participated in the world's largest tire exhibition, the SEMA show, held in Las Vegas during quarter three of FY24. The positive response received 
from customers at this event underscores the company's strong market position and customer satisfaction. Now I would request Shri Agarwal ji to brief about the financial performance of Q3. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will briefly share the key highlights for Q3 FY24. The first one is the consolidated sales were recorded at 3,000 rupees 3,700 crore, vis-a-vis 3,623 crore in Q3 FY23, which is up by 2% on YUY -Y basis. Profit at EBITDA level in the quarter was recorded at rupees 563 crore as against rupees 349 crore uh, in the corresponding period. An impressive increase of 61% on YUY -Y base. Operating profit margins were recorded at 15.2% on consolidated basis. Operating margins were sustained during the quarter despite some increase in raw material prices. Cash profits doubled to rupees 456 crore during the quarter. Profit after tax was rupees 227 crore, more than 3% increase on YOY -Y basis. Three times. Three times increase on YOY -Y basis. Sorry. Consolidated capacity utilization was 85%. Consolidated exports stood at rupees 570 crore, which is slightly lower than the previous correspondence, uh, corresponding quarter last year. Subsidiary companies, Cavendish Industries and J.K. Tornal, Mexico, continue to perform well and have contributed significantly to the revenues and profitability on a consolidated basis. Cavendish Industries Limited posted a top line of Rs. 900 crore, with EBITDA of at Rs. 140 crore, registering an operating margin of 15.6% and profit after tax was Rs. 50 crore. Earnings per share improved to Rs. 8.52 per share as against Rs. 2.66 per share in Q3 last year. Return ratios have significantly improved. ROC and ROE were in high teens. Pre-tax ROC was 19.7 and ROE was 19.4 percent, respectively. Net debt stood at rupees 3,456 crore as on 31st of December 23, which is lower by 24 percent over March 23 levels. Leverage ratios improved significantly over March 23. Net debt to equity improved to 0.75x in this in Q3 FY24 as against 1.29x as at the end of March 23. And net debt to EBITDA improved again uh, substantially to 1.72x in Q3 FY24 as against 3.39 as at the end of March 23. The balance sheet of the company is now much healthier with improved financial ratios which and we have circulated our earnings presentation which is available at our website as well on the website of stock exchanges. Now we open the forum for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Aditya Agrawal from Omkar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, what is the revenue mix by market for India operation for the quarter? 
revenue revenue mix uh, uh, of the india operation one second yes. uh, yeah so uh, the uh, in india operation the replacement uh, mar uh, replacement market for the india operation q3 it is 61% oem is 26% and export is 13% okay thanks and uh, what is the revenue mix by product line for india operations for q3 truck uh, bus which includes truck uh, buyers and truck bus radial it is 62% passenger line radial 23% two two three wheeler is 5% and non truck buyers is 11%. Okay, thank you so much. Welcome. Hello. Our next question is from the line of Aditya Rathi from Equities Investment. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Sir, we see that the sales has grown only two percent Y O Y. So I just wanted to know the volume change. So the volume has uh, grown uh, from the corresponding and consolidated six percent. The six percent is Y O Y, right, sir? Yeah, co uh, co co uh, our third quarter uh, corresponding to the third quarter. Uh, Last year. Right. And then QQ? Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, Q, Q, uh, Q, uh, one second. Uh, Q, uh, Q, uh, consolidated is 5% growth. 5% growth. And then what about the coming quarters? What do we expect? Sorry, uh, the uh, the Q and Q uh, Q Q uh, quarter on quarter is uh, negative five percent, not not plus. Right, right, sir. And sir, going forward, what are we expecting, sir, in terms of volume? Uh, we are expecting. We are very optimistic uh, on our uh, outlook in terms of the growth in the market. Uh, which is led by the infrastructure growth. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, positive uh, sentiment uh, growing forward, be it the replacement market and the uh, o, uh, the, uh, the OEM. And uh, we are seeing that uh, we should uh, we should uh, participate in that uh, momentum of uh, growth. Uh, private sector uh, capex, as I read out. Uh, has uh, uh, is coming back the capex cycles and uh, higher vehicle utilization is also uh, helping uh, us. So we are seeing uh, 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 in the range of seven six to seven percent uh, volume uh, growth going forward. I could not hear you. There was a crack in the voice. I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you properly. So I, Anshamanji mentioned that there will be Hello. a six to seven percent. Hello, can you hear us? Hello, Aditya sir, can you hear? Hello. I think the line from Aditya sir has been disconnected. Okay, I think his question was that uh, what is the kind of uh, uh, growth we are expecting. So I think uh, energy mentioned that six to seven percent volume growth we are expecting going forward. Okay, perfect. Sir, should I proceed for the next question? Yeah, please. Our next question is from the line of Chirag Jain from MK Globals. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, sir, I had a couple of questions uh, uh, broadly in terms of the CAPEX that we are doing and also the upcoming CAPEX that we have already announced. Bulk of the CAPEX is happening on the PCR side. 
uh, and that's a fairly significant uh, capex that we are incurring. So can you just throw uh, some light uh, and, and so just to understand or uh, get some more visibility in terms of how we would be ramping up, let's say, business on the PCR side, gaining market share. In fact, last five years we have been gaining, even let's say this year so far we have been gaining uh, let's say profit pool compared to the other car companies that we have uh, so far that they have uh, delivered results. So some confidence, uh, if you can, uh, or let's say some comments with respect to the marketing side, distribution side, apart from the capacity increase that we are doing on PCR, uh, how we can ramp up the uh, the operations over here. So as you know that uh, we are uh, already, uh, we are going to be completing our uh, announced uh, capex by fy 23 24, 24. Uh, and further to that we have announced uh, 1400 uh, crore uh, uh, capex which is uh, in in uh, which is in the category of tvr and uh, pcr and uh, all steel radial as well so we see that uh, uh, market uh, for us uh, 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 we should uh, participate in the growth, in the growing market. Uh, in quarter uh, three, uh, the domestic uh, volumes, uh, we witnessed a 7% uh, growth over the corresponding quarter. Replacement market volume grew by 11% and the OEM volume grew by 6%. So as uh, earlier question, we are uh, uh, seeing the market growth nearly 6 to 7%. Uh, so these uh, earlier announced uh, capacities are helping in uh, uh, participating in the fueling growth. Uh, plus, our play of uh, premiumization has uh, also helped uh, in terms of better profitability. So going forward, as we are uh, reaping the benefit of the new investments also which are going to come in, we are going to be definitely uh, participating in the uh, growing market. Okay, so apart from the growth, since uh, bulk of the growth would be coming from PCR, which I believe is uh, far uh, uh, less a margin accretive compared to the company average, uh, do we see an upward bias on margins uh, from a two, three year standpoint? I understand there could be quarterly fluctuations because of commodity swings, but from a two, three year standpoint, do you think there is an upward bias on margin profile? Uh, you see that uh, our uh, new capex is being in the radial line and as I said that PCR and uh, truck radial and all steel, they are all high margin uh, products uh, and uh, this is going to be adding uh, ultimately high profitability. So uh, as we go along, uh, you know the high margin products are going to be enriching our product mix. Yes. Going forward, uh, some of the vagaries in terms of uh, commodity prices or in terms of any price uh, uh, fluctuations will, so, will also insulate us to some extent of these vagaries because we will be participating in the higher uh, profitable, higher rim sizes and enriching our product mix as we are going along. Okay. And just last thing before I come back uh, in the question queue, uh, in terms of debt reduction, it has been quite uh, fast over the past few quarters. Uh, how do we see next two, three years, the overall debt equity uh, uh, position, sir? Sanjeev, Chirag, you yes. want to think? Yes, sir. Uh, so, Chirag, in fact, what we are seeing, that there is a very rapid reduction in the last uh, few quarters, which we have been able to achieve through uh, efficient working capital management and the kind of equity the, which has been uh, coming into the company. Uh, over the last nine months, in fact, we have raised about 740 crore rupees, which is mainly for the purpose of CapEx and the projects announced. But going forward also, because of the increased profitability, and also we have taken up these projects in phased manner. So we do not see any increase in uh, debt levels from the present. And the debt to equity will remain in the uh, range of about 0.5 to 0.7, which is today at 0.75. So we are expecting this to be there. And also debt to EBITDA, as we are seeing that the margins will sustain or rather improve further. So the debt to EBITDA will also improve further. And today, as uh, I told you, that we are at 1.72. 
So we are hoping that this will remain in the range of 1.5 to 1.8 in spite of the fact that we are going ahead with some of the expansion projects which will contribute of course to the greater profitability and the revenues. And therefore, the margins will improve and the prof this debt levels will remain within a very tight range. And also, we have been repaying almost about 400 crore piece of debt every year. So, keeping in view all these facts, I think we would be in a much better situation going forward. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for the detailed uh, answer. I'll come back in the queue. Because on the one hand, profitability is going up. On the other hand, we have raised equity. And on the third hand, the working capital management is being properly utilized so that the total borrowings are less. So financially, I think we are in a very happy situation at the moment. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Bharat from Living Root. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, you know, I would like to ask that, you know, Anshumanji, you were saying that, you know, we've, uh, we are scheduled to complete our CAPEX programs by FY24. So, what will be the peak revenue potential as for the CAPEX programs once the CAPEX program, programs are complete? Uh, well, uh, the, the, uh, at the earlier uh, the CAPEX plan uh, which was announced, so mm -hmm. that is around uh, 800 crores. That will uh, commence, uh, which is progressing well. Uh, that will commence by F five twenty F F F five two. Sorry, I'm sorry. Quarter two F five twenty four, uh, and uh, we are uh, looking at uh, eighteen to nineteen thousand uh, uh, crores. So this is a mix of so once uh, so quarter two F five twenty five. I think you were saying uh, by. Uh, June, July of this current year, right? July, so August of this current year. In fact, what Anshumanji is mentioning is that the production has started out of the uh, latest projects which we have completed and the ramp up is happening. And right. with the kind of capacities we have built up, the complete uh, ramp up, let's say in the first quarter we will be achieving of the financial year by 25. And then we will be in a position to achieve 18 to 19,000 crore rupees of revenue. Okay, okay. So meaning the ramp up will already, so you're saying the production has already started and then ramp up will happen. So yes, we'll yes, go to yes. ramp up is happening at this point in time. Okay, and you see that much demand, uh, you know, to, to sort of uh, do that much revenue because I think in this quarter I missed the first initial part of the call five minutes. Yes. So I think uh, the revenue was, revenue growth uh, compared to last quarter uh, in September was slightly lower. So if you can just touch upon the reason again, please. No, this is actually as per the uh, studies conducted by Grissel and other uh, such agencies, oh. there is a growth of about 6 to 7 percent in the entire sector, right? And this is likely to continue over the long period of time. And in the on quarter on quarter basis, if we see that there is could be a slight reduction, but overall Indian volumes have gone up. So, for example, as we mentioned earlier, Replacement market has grown already at that pace. And uh, I in Me, fact, JKTR, uh, in terms of the volume growth for the quarter three, hmm. has hmm. been an overall 7%, seven percent, where uh, yeah. uh, replacement grew by 11 and uh, yeah. OE grew by 6%. Six. Six okay. That's correct. Okay. So we are uh, expecting the uh, growth in the industry to be in that, uh, to continue in the long run. And there uh, could be some reason of, let's say, with some disturbances geopolitically in the export market or maybe in the international business and all. So, but those are very temporary in nature. Okay, okay. So, one more thing, I think, on the raw material part, of course, crude is, you have already mentioned, Sanjeev ji and others also, that, you know, crude, you are comfortable up to level of $85 a barrel. But if you talk about the other major component, that is uh, natural rubber, so that price in the last few months have gone up. I mean, from like 140 to around 160, 65 now. So what what role does that play? Because that is also a decent component of your raw material basket, isn't it? So as we mentioned earlier also that we have been actually ring fencing the margins. And margins in the range of about 13 to 15 percent. And there could be some fluctuation in one raw material or the other in the basket. 
but that is not likely to impact uh, the company's uh, profitability because we will be in a good position to pass on a large part of it could be with some lag or uh, lag effect but i think we are good to go with as long as the demand is there and because we are expecting a good demand increase growth going forward so the margins will be maintained in a healthy range of about 13 to 15 okay 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 and i think one funny question if i can just squeeze in for uh, mr katuria that you know that uh, what how do you see the cv cycle right now because i think this is the this is this year is expected the current financial year is fy24 they are seeing the highest ever sales of cvs so going ahead what's your outlook on the cv industry hello uh who i think uh, i think who he was of the line mr katuria but i think that there is some okay. Uh, okay. reception issue but to oh. take that question uh, yes. the understanding is that uh, uh, that cv market yes you are right cv market we are seeing some sluggish sluggishness uh, oh. but uh, this is going to be very uh, short term uh, oh. as the economy is uh, also fueling up and the core sector growth is coming in we seen that cv cycle uh, uh, market uh, and uh, the demand uh, coming back but it is not uh, going to drop that much it is going to be at a stable uh, level okay okay so sure. thank you sir thank you and and, and all the best thank you. thank you so much thank you our next question is from the line of mithul shah from dam capital please go ahead sir thank you for opportunity and congratulations for a very strong ebitda margin performance uh, vis a vis peers sir first question is on volume growth uh, when we are indicating 7% growth it... am i audible yes yes yeah so 7% volume growth is for q4 or going forward even 25 26 will witness similar growth and on that only in case uh, if we are assuming 7% growth and oem cv as well as tractor sales are coming down on a by by basis so that means oem growth would be uh, more or less flat or marginal growth that implies that replacement growth should be 12 15% uh, uh, type of number so that that assessment right sir interesting sawal hai but theek hai samajh nahi aa raha kya bol raha tha they do all weekly call or investor This is hello. Yes. Mr. Can you please repeat your can, question? Can, no, can you are uh, your question is finished. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. So there has been a seven percent. We witnessed a volume growth of seven percent in Q3, and here the uh, replacement uh, volume grew by eleven, and OEM grew by six percent. We see that momentum continuing. for uh, the next quarter as well but, uh, but uh, uh, going forward there could be some slight uh, uh, volume growth which would might come little lower in the oem because of the sluggishness in the uh, in the uh, in the truck uh, space but the overall we maintain that 6 to 7% the automotive uh, will uh, definitely grow and uh, do, and uh, please also don't forget that this uh, growth of uh, <clears throat> overall 7% has also come at a ta- at that uh, quarter of october november december where there is always a new year and there is always a model change and etc so that means the placement growth would continue to remain in double digit right yes yes absolutely so the second question on date side when we are saying a date will not increase from this level so sir broader calculation is that we are saying 1400 crore capex for next 2 years we already have 700 crore kind of a cash at balance sheet and nearly we are generating 1400 1500 crore cash flow every year now based on the current last 3 4 quarters performance 
सो दॅट इम्प्लाईज दॅट आउट ऑफ ऑलमोस्ट थ्री थाउजंड करोर ऑपरेशनल कॅश अँड सेव्हन हंड्रेड कॅश करोर ऑन बॅलन्स शीट we would be able to reduce our debt by more than 1000 or 1500 crore for in next 2 years so why we are saying that it will be uh, more or less in the similar range sanjeev no so overall the debt debt uh, today which is uh, as a fiat first of december was about 3500 crore overall on net debt basis so which is going to go down further as we are expecting uh, and getting better cash flows going forward with increased revenues and increased profitability and because today uh, we have taken up some of the projects so new loans will come in but the repayment is also happening at the same time and we will be rather in a better situation to reduce the debt going forward but i am saying that in case in case some more projects are taken up going forward then the broad levels of the debt to equity will be in the range of 0.5 to 0.7% still however the new project will depend on the market demand and the conditions na no? right but as of now we see that the debt levels we going will go for down further at a very fast pace okay sir lastly on this mexico operation we are hearing that uh, in us or north america may increase tariff on uh, all the imported tires so is there any update on that and in that case uh, can we ramp up our mexico operation to capitalize this benefit uh, what is the uh, utilization and potential in that uh, plants in terms of increasing manufacturing uh, at this point of time the utilization level is around 81% and therefore we have some uh, possibility to increase the capacity utilization and we are planning accordingly and uh, and uh, there is uh, no question of reduction of uh, the uh, export uh, quantities from mexico to us yeah yeah sir thanks sir thanks a lot and all the best thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you ladies and gentlemen a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask question our next question is from the line of aditya rati from equities investment please go ahead thank you again sir sir i just wanted to know how this capex of 1400 crores will phase out and when do we plan to start the commercial production of it bola to me it's important so for the capex the new capex of 1400 crores uh, will uh, commence by q3 uh, fy26 q3 fy26 ba Thank you. Hello. Yes. Yeah? Hey. You mentioned Q3 FY26, right? Yes. Okay. And sir, last question, sir, I wanted to know how the raw material basket has moved from last quarter to this quarter, and what do we expect it going forward? So we have uh, the quarter. Uh, uh oh, on a quarter quarter basis the raw material size increase has been in the tune of 2% okay due to the expected to be stable here or do we expect any movement or staggering huge no we see that uh, raw material prices will remain range bound uh, in the quarter 4 fy22 uh, 4 that's it for mine thank you sir koi ji bye next question is from the line of shashank from icici securities please go ahead yes hi good evening sir thanks for the opportunity sir uh, we just one small clarification on the capex part so we were already executing 1100 crores of capex before and the last quarter we announced 1025 capex putting together 2200 uh, crores of capex plan so this 8 and 1400 are part of the same plan or this is this, this is some incremental capex that is supposed to do this is incremental capex This is for mainly the T, uh, PCR, uh, and uh, this is an incremental capex because the earlier uh, expansion which we were implementing for 530 crore for PCR, 
that has already been completed. The ramping up is happening for uh, production increase. So that has already been completed uh, as we have discussed earlier also. And this is an incremental capex for the PCR. And for others also we have announced uh, 261 for TBR and 112 crore for the uh, all steel radial tires. For all steel uh, LTR tires. Right truck radials. Well, to the starting FI 23 till 26, so this four year period, what will be, what is the uh, entire capex spend, the growth capex spend? So, All as we said, uh, 790 crore piece has already been completed and the production ramp up is happening, and then uh, we will be implementing 1400 crore piece of expansion uh, capex. 2200 odd crores, right? Sorry? In total, 2200 odd crores. Yes. And we will be spending something like 250 crores of maintenance capex each year as well. That's correct. Right. So, so then, uh, in terms of cash flow outflows, so how do we see the capex outflow for this year and next year in terms of the capex spend? So, uh, I think we have discussed already. Uh, we have been uh, implementing the projects in phases and over the next two years period. So, this fund will be. Uh, Funding of these capex will happen uh, from uh, through a mix of debt and equity. The equity part is already raised of about uh, 500 crore piece recently, and the balance will come from internal accruals and the debt. Yes. But so from a cash flow perspective, then eventually we should be spending like 1,000 crores each year, right? 24, 25, 26. Including the normal capex of rupees yes. 300, 200 to 50 to 300 crore piece. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Right, right. Understood, sir. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mithul Shah from NAM Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, thank you for follow-up opportunity. Sir, one clarification when we told that revenue potential of 18 to 19,000 crore, that is uh, uh, including this 800 crore capex only, uh, or we consider this 1400 crore capex post that potential goes to 19,000 crore? Actually, that is only with the existing project which, have, which we have recently completed, and the new capex which will come in only in quarter 3 of FY26, so that is not included in this. So after that, what could be revenue potential, including that 1400 crore capex, maybe after 2 years? 1.15, 1 1.1 1 .1 to 1.2 ratio of uh, asset to uh, uh, turnover. I think we will add another maybe about uh, 1600 crore piece. Okay, sir. And second on Cavendish, sir, we are already now at a 15.5, 16% type of EBITDA margin. So is there any further scope uh, for improvement in margin with the utilization or product mix or it is... This is the optimum level for Cavendish now. Beyond 15.5, which we have achieved in Q3. Yeah, so actually, if you see, uh, you know, the, we have been working on premiumization and improving our product mix. So that exercise will continue. But also, we have seen that there was an impact of 2% on raw material. Uh, prices. So, if everything were to be favorable going forward, definitely there will be an opportunity to uh, improve the margins further on operations. But we also need to keep in mind that uh, some of the other, as Sanjeev Agarwalji earlier explained, that the raw metal basket, some of the components of the raw metal basket may be volatile. So, we will have to watch those carefully, both in terms of crude as well as in terms of national rubber. So, in case those turn out to be favorable and our efforts on premiumization also are going to be uh, giving us the results, then yes. Otherwise, we, as we say, for our industry, it is that 13 to 15 percent is something which uh, we expect, which is a stable, uh, uh, you know, uh, guidance that can be taken. Sir, so lastly on Mexico operation again. This quarter was uh, Q1, Q sequentially slightly weaker. Anything, one time, any specific thing on going forward, how we expect performance in terms of volume as well as margins? Uh, well, going forward, the uh, revenue should be improving 
and uh, the markets, of course, uh, we are expecting them to be better. As I had said earlier, that our capacity utilization in 2024 uh, is expected to be better than 2023. But nothing one specific for Q3 in terms of number of days or holidays or anything? No, Q3, as I said, that, you know, 17 days of uh, December are lost due to the Christmas holidays. So, therefore, you know, the as I had said in my opening remarks, that the Q3 is uh, affected because of the lesser number of working days. Understood, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rahil Shah from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, how was the MHCV demand in quarter three, and how is it likely to be in quarter four? So, when you are talking about MHCV demand, the OE, uh, you know, the OE from the OE, the demand was sluggish. I would say it was almost flat as compared to the uh, earlier quarters. So, there we are seeing that quarter four is generally a good quarter. So, we expect that the demand should come back uh, in quarter four. Although, uh, you know, uh, we have to wait, uh, watch this very carefully because as we know that the uh, m and is the, uh, in, in the overall commercial vehicle is cyclical, but m and has the largest amplitude in cyclicality. And last two, three years we have seen that there is an upcycle. So, we have to wait and watch that where are we on the cycle. Are we kind of flattening out or uh, is the upcycle uh, going to continue? One thing which I would like to definitely say that buses are doing very well. In fact, the demand for the bus tires is uh, quite robust, especially the tubeless radials. And also the uh, demand in the mining and construction, that is also holding up quite well. And we hope that the infra uh, push that is there from the government will continue. So that also should help us uh, generate the demand. But when we look at the replacement market, I think so the replacement market, the demand is quite good as of now also. And we expect that going forward it will continue to remain uh, robust for the tires in the replacement market. Okay. Uh, and uh, this uh, 13 to 15 percent, you said sustainable margin steady state. You meant for a uh, like specific uh, business arm or on console level, you said, for Q4 and going ahead in the next year as well? No, so this 13 to 15 percent we said was a, on a longer term basis, uh, okay. you know, on a steady state. But uh, uh, we will have to see. One of the major things that we have to watch very carefully is the raw material basket. Right, okay. And can you just give me the JK tonnel revenue this quarter? Uh, this quarter we mentioned 620 crores. We I converted the peso millions into rupees. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, any uh, sharing any guidance for next year revenue growth? We are we are we are working towards improving this uh, revenue uh, going forward in 2024. All right, so thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Chirag Jain from MK Globals. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, sir, uh, just had one question with respect to the competitive scenario uh, because growth has somewhat uh, been uh, slow in the current quarter and even RM is also stabilized. Uh, any signs of discounting or price curves or any, any major sort of a competitive action that we are seeing in the market in general? Uh, any thoughts around that? Chirag, uh, Anuj here. So basically, you know, you're asking uh, about the pricing. If you can see is that uh, when the raw metal costs are going up, we had actually taken a lot of price increases and we were able to pass on most of the impact of the raw material that was there into the market, although it happened at a lag. But in this year, we have seen that the raw material prices have been rather range-bound. We saw a marginal increase of 2% in between quarter two and quarter three. 
uh, we expect that going forward this will be there. On the pricing front, uh, it is very difficult to give you a very straight answer for the simple reason that every segment plays out differently. And within the segment also, we have now worked on premiumization. So there are certain niche SKUs, what we call as the power SKUs, where we have taken certain price increases. But in general, we are trying to see that, you know, finally, the pricing is a function of the supply and demand in the marketplace, the market forces. So segment to segment, SKU to SKU, uh, the team navigates. But overall, if you see, uh, if, is there a reduction in the overall price uh, or the NSR? I think so. It has been more or less uh, in the same range. Uh, SKU by SKU, there have been certain variations. Okay, so broadly the market is fairly stable from a comparative landscape perspective. No major change yeah. per se. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Bharat from Living Root. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, you know, I just missed one question. I wanted to ask regarding the tax rate. Uh, so in the previous quarter, you had mentioned that from the next year, we are moving to a 26% tax rate. So we are still on track for that? Yes, we are very much on track and uh, uh, we will be consuming the entire uh, MAT credit available in this financial year. And uh, okay. we will move forward, uh, from next year onwards, we will be moving into the new regime. Okay, okay. I think that's the only question I have. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now end the conference over to management for closing comments. Okay, thank you so much uh, for joining this conference call and I wish you all a good uh, year ahead and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of MK Global Secure, uh, Financial Service that concludes this conference, thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.